I think there are two major issues being faced on the internet today. One of those is that most of the data we transfer is happening inside of walled gardens. So what I mean by this is, let's say that you want to do something on YouTube. It has to go through YouTube servers. If you want a YouTube account, you have to sign up on YouTube.com. If you want to upload something, you go to YouTube.com. If you want to post something, YouTube.com. You have no choice about using YouTube.com. And if you want to do something on Twitter, it has to go through Twitter.com. Even if you're using, say, like the mobile app or a third party way to interact with Twitter, everything goes through Twitter.com. And the second thing is, if you get removed from YouTube, you lose everything that's on your YouTube account, and there's no way to take it somewhere else. But what if I said that we could have a microblogging platform, a video hosting platform, an image hosting platform, even like a dating website if you really wanted to, and all of the users for each of these platforms could interact with the users on the other platforms. And these aren't developed by the same groups. These groups have basically no connection to each other whatsoever. But there's one little thing in common, and that is all of them decided to build their service on top of ActivityPub. And ActivityPub is what makes this possible. And this isn't just some hand waving saying, oh, one day this might happen. One day ActivityPub will be implemented in something. This is something that exists right now. ActivityPub is being used and millions of users actually use it. In the grand scheme of things, ActivityPub is still really, really new. It was only introduced back in 2018, and what it is, is an open protocol for a social network. Now, I mean social network in the loosest definition of the term, not something strictly like Twitter or like Facebook. What I mean is it defines things like what it means to block a user, what it means to have a follower, what it means to follow someone, what it means to upload, Basically, the absolute minimum you need to be able to have a functioning social network. Now, with just that, it wouldn't be very interesting because what you would have is just a bunch of walled gardens that are all defined in basically the same way. And we'd have the exact same problem. It would just be much more boring to look at. The reason why ActivityPub is special is because it also defines an API to communicate between ActivityPub services. So this functionality can be used internally in a service. So let's say that we have Mastodon accounts, for example. So in the case of Mastodon, there isn't just one singular way to access Mastodon. There are a bunch of different instances run by different people. So in my case, I have an account on mstdn.social, but let's say that you have an account on mastodon.technology, for example. Now, even though these are run by completely different groups, because they're both ActivityPub services, they can communicate with each other as if they're under the exact same domain. And if I want to follow your account, it doesn't stop me from doing that because they're all under ActivityPub. But it can also be used externally as well. So there is another microblogging platform that runs ActivityPub called Pleroma. Now, it's not really important what the details of Pleroma actually are. The only important thing is that it runs ActivityPub. Now, because they're both running ActivityPub, even though I have a Mastodon account, I can actually follow people who are using Pleroma from my Mastodon account on mstdn.social. And these are developed by completely different people who have completely different ways to develop software. But because they both implemented ActivityPub properly, the users of both platforms can interact with each other. Now, the nice thing about this is it doesn't even have to be the exact same type of application. Two things being microbloggers being able to interact with each other, that's cool enough. But... There is another platform called Peertube. Peertube is also an ActivityPub platform, and that is a video hosting platform. So if you go and say follow a Peertube user from your Mastodon account, you can actually get updates on when they upload a video. Because Peertube uses ActivityPub to treat uploading a video the same way that Mastodon would use it to treat posting a microblog. And I can't speak for every ActivityPub platform, but a lot of them make it really easy to import and export your ActivityPub account data, so you could take all of that information and then say, move over to something like Peertube or move over to Pleroma and have all of the same followers and all of the same following and everything that actually applies to that platform. Now, just like the POSIX spec, just because something implements ActivityPub doesn't mean that it can only implement ActivityPub. So Peertube, for example, has a bunch of features that just wouldn't really make any sense on a microblogger. And the same is going to be true on Mastodon as well. It does a bunch of things that just wouldn't make any sense on a video platform. So that stuff just isn't part of ActivityPub. 
So when you have a service like Mastodon, which has a bunch of individual instances which are all connected to each other, this is known as federation. Basically, it's just a fancy word for a net of servers. And when something is federated, you can't really be banned from it. The worst that can really happen is you can be banned from an instance, and then if you go and spin up your own instance, the instance you are banned from could just go and block your instance, and then maybe the instances that are close to them could also go and ban your instance as well. But you could still keep interacting with other instances out there. Now this does come with a very obvious problem, but the advantage that comes from it I think is definitely worth it, and that is that it's pretty much impossible to get rid of spam accounts because if a spam account makes an instance and their instance gets blocked, they can just make a new one and just keep going indefinitely or until they get bored. But I think the advantage of never really being able to be removed from a platform definitely outweighs that problem. Now, when you have these federated services like Mastodon, PeerTube, Pleroma, and they're federated together, this is known as the Fediverse, which is short for Federated Universe. Now, earlier in the video, I did make it seem like ActivityPub was the only way to do federation, but that isn't the case. There are other ones that do exist. So things like the Diaspora Network, which is basically only used by Diaspora. We also have Matrix. Yes, I mean the Matrix being used by the chat client. That is also a federated service. People run their own instances and they all connect to each other. It's just that I don't think there's anything outside of Matrix that actually uses the Matrix protocol. We also have OStatus, and OStatus was probably the biggest one that existed prior to ActivityPub, but since ActivityPub came out, a lot of platforms that were using it have basically deprecated it with the exception of things like GNU Social, and we also have Zot and Zot6, but I don't really know of any platforms that actually use those. And just in case you need another reason to care about ActivityPub, it's also one of the W3C recommendations. And if you don't know what that means, basically it means it's defined as one of the web standards, along with things like, you know, HTML and JSON and XML. Basically, the W3C defines this as something that is fundamental to the web. So there are plenty of ActivityPub platforms, and a good list to start from is actually on the Wikipedia page. It's not a complete list or anything like that, but it will list out the main ones, and it has things on here like, say, GNU Social, or Mastodon, or Microblog.pub. It has things like, say, Peertube, and Pleroma, and PixelFed. PixelFed is an image hosting platform. That's the one I meant. That's the one I was talking about earlier. Now, I did make a joke about a dating platform, but it doesn't actually exist that I know of. It definitely can exist, there's no reason why it couldn't, ActivityPub would be perfectly fine for that. Now, there is one platform that some people don't really want to admit is still part of the Fediverse, and that is Gab. So Gab initially started as a fork of Mastodon, and it actually still is running ActivityPub in the background. I know this for one, because I can go and import my data from my Mastodon account and export all of my stuff from Gab. The second reason is because you can still connect to Gab with FediLab. So FediLab is one of the most popular like apps that can connect to various ActivityPub platforms. I believe it works with Mastodon, Pleroma, Peertube, and a couple of others. But it still technically works with Gab as well. The developer doesn't particularly like Gab, but he said in a couple of issues on the repo that he's not going to go and block it. He's just not going to explicitly support any of the extra features. Unlike some of the other apps out there like Tusky, which did explicitly block it. So if you are interested in the activity pub spec, it has been published in a couple of places online. So here is one of them. Go on that one. This is the one on the W3C website. And you can go see how basically everything functions. I'm not going to go through this in this video. But if you would like to go and say like implement an activity pub platform... This is something you should definitely go and read. I'd also recommend going and looking at existing implementations just to see how it can be implemented. But if you don't really have the developer mindset and you'd much rather use one of the existing platforms and just host your own instance, one way you can do that is over on Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. 
a huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. So I think that's going to be everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Monza, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter Lee, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, then links down below to my Patreon, subscribe to our Libre Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute. I don't particularly like PeerTube because PeerTube is going to be really expensive to run. Maybe I'll come up with a better plan later down the line. But for now, I'm not on PeerTube. But I do think it is kind of cool. So don't hate me, PeerTube users. I think that's going to be everything for me. And I'm out.